Today's chat is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash FFC. With over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player, this is a great alternative for keeping up with the Focus Fire Book Club. Welcome to Focus Fire Chat. Explore together. Welcome back for episode 117. A focus fire chat. Yes, I'm sorry. 117. A focus fire <laughs> I <was> like, chat. <laughs> we yeah, yeah, we're, we're doing totally okay, doing that. We're doing that. Oh, uh, so yes, we are on 117. It's a very special episode for those of you who, not for the content, just for the number. Let's just all be honest. It's just the number. But we're recording live on January 19th, 2018, over on twitch.tv slash focus fire chat. Big shout out to our live chat here. Thank you so much for joining us for another evening back in the tower. This is your host, Blue Crew 86. Alongside me, we have the man who has been said has the voice of a flower, Ghost Sheldon. Justin, I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm just gonna slap you eventually one of these so, times. <laughs> so it's I've I've said to myself multiple times now, eventually there's going to be a topic that's going to come up that you won't be able to make into an actual person's name. <laughs> Five months later, here you're, you're going you're going pretty well on this one. Actually, this one I think is is probably my best to date because it actually <laughs> includes includes the whole topic name and still managed to merge it into a real person's name. So go Sheldon at your service. <laughs> Where were we? No weird side. We also have our favorite Gunter, the one and only green eyed music lover green. Hope you're doing well. Looking forward to tonight's I chat. I am. It's been kind of an interesting it's been brought up a lot lately, actually, this topic. Uh, Beard and I have talked about it quite a bit. I know that uh, one of our newest Discord buddies has talked about this quite a bit. So I'm mm-hmm. excited to kind of dig into it. I think, I think, yeah, I think there's a couple people in Discord who are really excited for us to talk about like, ghost shells. Chanting. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yes, Beard, Beard is taking the night off, hopefully, to get some sleep. But... I just wanted to actually give a big shout out to everyone in the community. Actually, we last week we asked the community what your favorite ghost shell was, and we got a good, good amount of uh, responses. And Green, you kind of want to do the honors here. And what was sure. what was the answer? So we had twenty six people give us entries via Twitter or Discord. Um, I don't know if we got any email. I don't think that was one of the things that we asked for specifically. But out of the 24, 26, 26 entries, there were, I was surprised we actually had a clear winner because there's 120 ghost shells and there's the polling size is very small. So the, it was, yes, yeah, stati- statistically, it was kind of a long shot that would get something that would won, but something definitely won. And number, First place was the Ghost Ghost from D1 during Rise of Iron. Uh, and I wrote these all out and I don't have them up in front of me because I'm in the different part of the chat. Let's see here. <laughs> Ghost Ghost. And then second place was a tie between Kingslayer Shell, Last City Shell, Kill Tracker Go- and Kill Tracker Ghost. Hmm. Honorable oh. Mentions, which is anybody who got at least one. Electronica, Precious Metals, War to Come, Number Two, Hunter Shell, Senator Shell, Iron Wolf Shell, Devil Shell, Consumed Shell, Vanguard Shell, Frontier Shell, and Generalist Shell. And yeah, the Generalist Shell. I know there was a couple. There was a couple for Generalist, wasn't there? Uh, there was one for Generalist, uh, and she is in chat right now. Oh, okay. She was very. She was very happy about that one. So. <laughs> Not the, yeah. not, I believe I believe she was the one that came up with the heretical pancake description. Yes. <laughs> That's but a lot of fun. Lotta. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> it was fun though, because it was it was nice to see everybody be like, oh man, I, I missed this one. I missed this one. It's like you could see kind of personalities mm-hmm. from people just kind of stick out with what kind of shell they liked. But 
the thing that I want to tell everybody is that I actually kind of memorialized your guys' vote. So if you ever go and check out the Ghost Shell mind map, I put your your either twi- uh, Twitter tag or your Discord tag at next to the shell that you voted for. So you can go and check that out sometime. Nice. But yes, and then what? Um, like I like I said last week, I think we're going to try to do this every week. So I'm kind of trying. I'm trying to think what we should ask for next week because next week's topic is going to be Saint fourteen, an update on Saint fourteen. So what do you guys think for the question this week? What do you? What are our thoughts here? I'm afraid to say what I think. <laughs> Regarding Saint 14? Regarding somebody that supposedly is somebody related to Saint 14. Nope, nope. Uh, nope. Justin and I are both going to veto that question right out of the gate. Okay. Shoot it down. That may just be a for fun thing. I might put that as like a Twitter poll for people to to put on there just for my kicks and giggles. Lore. Lost That's lore. lore. We, we should have a new segment. There's lost lore at the beginning, and then there's lore that should be lost. <laughs> that. that would be every week, though. Like I think that would win. Yeah. God, yes. No, um, Saint Fourteen. See what you did. Huh? Hmm. You know, I think we should kind of table that for now and um, come back to that maybe a little later. Since we don't have one super prepped, unless you come up with something, in I mean, a like, short period of time. like Beard Beard had one that like is Saint fourteen actually dead? Why or why not? Uh, um, I'm thinking like yeah. what we we saw the beginning of a uh, of a little bit of a scuffle between Saint fourteen and Osiris. So oh yeah, wh- who actually who, won that? Who fight? actually won? You know, yeah, get I, get like I think community. that's I so, think that should be it. Okay, yeah, all right. So community community feedback on this week. I want to know. Who would who do you think would win in a fight between Osiris and Saint Fourteen? Because they don't give us the ending of that that fight. No, they I, just have their no. discussion, their argument. The quote, the quote, discussion that could mm-hmm. have collateral damage. Mm-hmm. I love, I love that that little quip there. It's like discussions with him can have collateral damage. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So yes, so who would win between Osiris and Saint Fourteen? And if you really are wanting, give us the reason why you think that, um, and we'll we'll tally that up, and we'll let you guy who wins Sagira. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I know we're looking forward to diving into the discussion and I know the team is here as well. So let's run through our standard intro notes and then we'll get right into it. Our topic for this week's chat is going to be a look at ghost shells. Before we jump into that, however, I do have a few housekeeping notes to run through. In our last chat, we discussed Exodus Black. If you ever miss an episode and would like to catch up, please be sure to check out the new FocusFireChat.com for archives, articles and links to the other aspects of Focus Fire Chat. If you don't mind, please give us some feedback on iTunes to let us know how we're doing, as well as helping us to continue to grow. As many of you already know, Focus Fire Chat is a cross-community gathering, where the intent is to offer a week-long, in-depth view of a particular subject from within the lore of Destiny and other games. This chat begins every Tuesday morning and runs until the following Tuesday, with topics decided by the group via a poll that begins every Friday and ends on the Tuesday morning of the new chat. Every Friday at around 10 p.m. Central, we get together to stream a recap of the previous week's chat for those who are unable to participate. Please be sure to also give some support to the other podcasts in the Guardian Radio Network, links of which can be found on our show notes or on our new website. Podcasts focused on Destiny include Guardian Radio, the first and longest-running Destiny podcast on the net, Guardian One, a Destiny group dedicated to Guardians helping Guardians and discussing current Destiny news and happenings, Ghost and Echoes, a collection of the Destiny audio grimoire from Destiny One, and the network's newest edition, This Guardian Life, which is a podcast from the casual Guardian's perspective that highlights all Guardians, large and small. We also have a non-Destiny-focused podcast, The Enthusiast Life, which is a podcast that discusses a wide range of fun topics from within the entertainment world. Our next chat is going to be a discussion on Saint-14. Please be sure to weigh in on the poll this weekend to let us know what topic you want to discuss after that. 
Links to that poll can be found either on Twitter, at Focus Fire Chat, or within our Discord server. I went ahead and asked Green to put together a high-level summary of tonight's topic, and this is what she had to say. There was a time when we were much more powerful, but that was long ago. In its dying breath, the Traveler created the ghost to seek out those who can wield its light as a weapon. Guardians, to protect us, and do what the Traveler itself no longer can. Built from machinery and the Traveler's light, ghosts guide their guardian companions in the quest to reclaim our solar system. Every ghost seeks out its guardian among the ancient dead. The ghost serves as a scout, librarian, and mechanic, waking ancient machinery and cracking alien codes. In the right situations, a ghost can even save a guardian from death. But ghosts are not immortal. As far as guardians know, every loss is irreplaceable. You must push back the darkness. Guardians are fighting on Earth and beyond. Join them. Your ghost will guide you. I can only hope he chose wisely. Before we jump into the information and thoughts that the community had about ghost shells, however, let's look at this week's Lost Lore. Okay, so Lost Lore, this was a this was a tough one. There's a, there's a couple different things that really stand out to me. Uh, Green, I'm gonna have to rely on you and Justin to kind of determine which one we go with. There's the okay. the first one, which is kind of the one that we were kind of talking about, is the the data port issue, or not mm-hmm. issue, but the, the little data port factoid that I was like kind of happy to find in the art book and then there's the question of your tongue-in-cheek reference of ghost in the machine um which is not really <laughs> lost lore but it still bugs me because it just that entire thing bugs me um, let's do the art the art book one because not everybody has the art book okay but i do i will probably bring up ghost in the machine just to poke at you later yeah, so yeah. fair warning uh, okay so anyways um in the Art of Destiny Volume 1, because there are now two volumes, both of which are amazing, I really suggest going to get a copy or finding a copy of those. Um, but uh, in in the first volume, they actually have like basically con- – it's not really concept. It's actually a breakout of a, a ghost, and it's using the general general shell – which is the default shell. Um, but if you look at it, it's a 360 degree uh, presentation of the ghost. Mm-hmm. And the cool thing about it is that it's shown with the shell in a splayed out position. So it actually shows you like all the inner work like not all the inner workings, but like pieces of the, uh, the core sphere that normally are not really noticeable. If you don't really like su- if you're not paying super close attention in game, but in the back of the ghost, there is an actual data port. Like, it looks like a, a big, well, what it really looks like, to me at least, is it looks very similar to the data port that is in the Spartan armor from Halo that they use to house the smart AI chips in the Molnar armor. Um I'm just that's just to me that's what it seems like it seems like it's very similar to a but it it is a data port it's definitely a data port so Mm. I guess the question that that actually leads me to is and this is kind of what we talked about a lot is like why what it what is there or why is that there in a ghost like you know what what is that possibly is there possibly any hint for the presence of that well, we've seen the ghost it hasn't really been plugged into anything, but we've looks like Sagira was plugged into the Vex thing with Osiris during Curse of Osiris. And then the ghost that was drained from its light in D1 in one of the very first moon missions that's on the pedestal. 
it's kind of like sort of plugged into the pedestal or at least being presented on the pedestal. Uh, we never see them hooked up to anything though. Yeah. And like, I'm going to see in, in live stream, I'm going to see if I can get, yeah. Okay. So if you look in live stream, uh, well, for those who are in the live stream, um, you can see on the back, if you go into examine the ghost, right. Mm-hmm. And you just turn it around. Cause you can turn, that's one of the great things about the, the menu is you can actually turn it around. Um, you can see the this port on the back of the sphere. And this is present in every single shell. So regardless of the shell that you have um, located or whatever shell that you have applied, um, it, it will be back there. Uh, and like the cool thing about the art book is like it actually has like uh, it's not really like detailed diagrams, but it's it's broken out much more clear. Uh, can I make an addendum? Yes. It's not in the pancake shells. Of course it's not because they're heretical. Um, it actually, the pancake shells look like if you were to pop off a battery cover, they have like two little slots for a key to pop off the back. I think I have that's a what those look- shell. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do, but I don't. Oh I just- yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. Mm-hmm. So Sagira, they're, they Sagira's do not- shell is like the easiest to see it. Cause Sagira's sh- like display shell. Is mm-hmm. already like the opened. It, it's opened up. I don't like. Is it split? Do you call it splayed? It's yeah. It's opened up. But yes, the heretical pancake shells uh, have the. I don't even know what you would call that. It's. I think it's a watch it's, battery. I like. I like that like description. A, yeah, it's a battery cap type thing. The front of their face looks like a button. It's very annoying. It looks like a Fitbit. That's what it looks like. Well. You know, they kind of are like our Fitbit. <laughs> they do track a lot of things. Um, <laughs> in chat, so the heretical pancakes put a cover over the data port. <laughs> they did. They did. Uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah, my gosh. I, as far as that data port, it's on 3D printed models, too. Yes. If, you, um, yeah. if it's a good 3D printed the, model, they'll have that uh, line back there. T- uh, the Target one, Lana said that she got the Target, which I'm kind of jealous of. But the Target uh, exclusive vinyl figure does have it as well. Mm-hmm. I tried to print out a ghost shell about a year and a half ago. And that piece, the little circle piece, actually had the slot there. And I had to pop this, that into place, and then I ended up breaking it because I do not understand 3D printing puzzles, apparently. Anyway, yeah, it's there. It's its own piece. So, but, yeah. All right, well, so as far as, like, thoughts as to what that could be, do you guys have any thoughts on that? Or I'm sure you have thoughts on it. The, the, the port? The data port. Yeah, the data port. Um... He, I do, but it's spinny. So, the ghost, in my opinion, doesn't have a lot of use for the physical transmission of of data via electrical signals, like like we experience right now when we when we upload something from our phone to our computer or anything else we plug in a physical cable for. The ghost seems to do most of its data transmission via transmat and light manipulation. Um, this, I, I'm, I'm wanting to say this, this could be a, kind of a, a precursor inclusion. Um, that's, I mean, maybe there for. Um, interfacing with maybe even war mind technology that's that's firewalled against paracausal paracausal in, intrusion. I this is completely guess. Type I'm thing. a big I'm a big fan of pins in chat theory. It's the ghost belly button. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> Which although pins although pins the belly button would be on the front so i have a <laughs> not not necessarily I, it depends i i see your belly button and raise you another body part um, 
but yeah, yes. I think I think like my my idea is that it's kind of like a backwards compatibility connector port. Like mm-hmm. but I mean I guess my I guess my question really is that kind of begs the question of the origin of the ghost. Right? Yes, and that's that's where I was actually gonna kind of dig into. Okay, so why don't you go go for it? So the the ghost we get from a few different lines that the ghost itself is not the shell. The shell is what holds the ghost. Uh, we get that line in one of the strikes, and it's kind of sort of mentioned at the beginning through the speaker's speech. If that's the case, the shell is... I wonder if the shells are repurposed from something else, and they're just using it to house the ghost. Well, it's okay. it's actually did, yeah. pieces... It's actually shards of the traveler, though. Is it though? Yeah. What? Like, are we st- at continuing least, to steal uh, shards from the traveler? I don't think it is. Make... I don't think it is. I don't. I well, don't... that's there's no mention of the traveler reanimating, reanimating existing Ancilla to make the ghosts. Like the the traveler created the ghost from itself no but it's from its dying breath not from the shell yeah Mm -hmm. but i mean like that doesn't explain that doesn't i mean in lore wise that doesn't explain some of the introduction of new shells and that's actually a question that we had in chat you know like what what does constitute the restriction on materials used for ghost shells Mm -hmm. because there's there's a there's a question there too because especially with um regards to the edz now we have access to a shard of the traveler could we not make a ghost shell out of those shards can we not make a ghost shell out of dust dust crystals can we not you know whatever in 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 chats bringing this up as well uh marcus wren in lore actually made dd his ghost they he made her a a racing shell so mm-hmm. i don't know it train horn i don't know if um deal with it <laughs> it's like an obligatory train horn now in the show whether it's you or Kudo. me brownie points if you can find the train horn in the show of focus fire chat <laughs> it's, um, it's a hype train it's a it's hype, a hype train. train oh okay okay there you it's, le- go. it's leaving the station um but like yeah i i think that i don't i don't know i don't think that the ghost shells have to be made from shards of the traveler green i, I kind of agree with you though too because that's the only consistent thing about the ghost really is the eye, right? And even that is kind not of not even then. I was about to say because the, even then the pancakes have kind of a different. Mm-hmm. But do they, they have, have a the same shape? No, that's a, a totally different looking eye. But the actual light is the same. Uh, let me yeah, pull it is. One up. It is. It's still yeah. a little diamond thing. That. But that like, yeah, the, the port, the port itself is, yeah, the port itself is this. What, what did you call it? The smart rectangle. The smart oh yeah, it's, port. Yes. All right. So, so I'll actually uh, correct myself. My my uh, recollection of the ghost card is flawed, or was flawed. Um, it actually says built from machinery and the traveler's light. Mm-hmm. So it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it happens. Well, mm-hmm. and then and then the other thing is, and this is kind of going to segue into our first kind of our first point is, you know, what and why are there shells for the ghost? Right. This this is a good segue for us into this. Um, you know, there there are there were some shells, and I don't think we ever really saw them in game, but there were some shells that actually did augment the ghost's capabilities. Or that were supposedly to augment the ghost capabilities. And that was the foundry, the intrusion, and the shipwright shells. Now, we never saw them in games, so it's questionable if we can really consider them canon. But the descriptions on those shells kind of implied that the ghost... And ghosts can self-modify. So there's also a degree of... Um, you know, is the ghost actually making the shell for itself or is the guardian making it? Because like, you know, Mark, again, Marcus Wren is kind of helping Dee Dee make a shell. But is is Marcus the one that's actually making the shell or is it, it's it's a weird question on where does the shell come from? And then um, 
what what is the purpose of these shells? Like I can see different different shells offering different like abilities. Like the uh, the example that I have is capabilities. Yeah, like the example I have is like the intrusion shell is basically described as a shell that helps in, uh, helps a ghost be sneakier. You know, it's it's a good, which is why we never got it because we love triggering alarms. Um, so. Hmm. I'm sorry, I'm looking up stuff from Dresden Files because this reminded me of something from that. So carry on. I'll be, I'll be back in a no, second. No, that's fine. Um, I'm trying to think if... Justin, do you have anything on that idea? Um, I kind of struggle with that because... It's it's almost as if in the beginning the only option the only the only logical option is that the that the traveler animated pieces of machinery with light. If you just if you read the the grimoire card for ghosts, um, so, so I don't know how that works with the actual machinery of it. Well, and um, that also begs the question too of like, can light animate just pure machinery? Yeah. And that's, that's a good question. I mean, I because, think it, I oh, think it can. Right. No, but I, I mean, just the connection, say, the connection there was like, you see the, uh, the ability to take right from Oryx. They can. He can only take organic matter. So, mm-hmm. is that limitation not applicable to light? Well, the see the the power to take involves will. So if oh, you're, I see what you're saying, right? But you're but like, it, hmm. there is a personality if, to the ghost. If you do, if you do, well, there is a personality to, the, and I I actually have a theory on why that is, but um the the personality isn't inherent in the machinery that's that's imbued it's it's actually present inside the traveler before before the ghost is animated but if you want to go back to the to the example of the taken the the taken and the art of taking that oryx um used had a lot to do with will and an inanimate machine has no will like so you cannot take an inorganic, um, non-sentient thing. Like, um, you, do you mind if I say something heretical? Do it. What if the traveler didn't put the light in the shells originally? What if somebody else did? Like, like a certain corporation that was trying to live forever, or at least its heads were oh. trying to live forever. Ooh, I don't Right, but like how would theory. you, how would you, I, I, I don't necessarily have a problem with that theory. Oh, um, no, not from a viability standpoint. Right. I guess my, that all of our ghosts are Clovis spray pawns, but yeah, well, no, but I mean, I guess my problem with that theory is the idea of them being able to put light into a machine. The thing, yeah, it's it's very wishy-washy, and this is actually a theory that Beard and I have been kind of working on together, and Beard's been writing out notes for another episode sometime, a video that he's wanting to do. It's The one thing that it always bugged me is, like, we have this ghost that has seems to have a personality, it has light, it, it obviously appears to have light, or at least it can interact with light. But all the light that falls on the ground, it doesn't do anything. Our light, we have to direct it. There has to be a a conscious will moving it in some way. A con- maybe not a consciousness, but a directive moving it in some way, shape, or form for it to do anything. So mm-hmm. why is our ghost different? Um. Well, so if you think of light like um, a form of electromagnetic radiation, so it's 
think of light as being radiated by the traveler in all directions from it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so the bulk sum of all that radiation, most of it is wasted. So most of that, most of that radiation from the traveler is actually wasted because it falls upon objects that, that can make no use of it. Um, grass, trees, mountaintops, mm-hmm. things like that. But, but when, um, the proper, when the proper material is irradiated, it, it can cause um, certain reactions to happen. And this, this actually, yeah, well, photosynthesis is a perfect example of this. Um, an, another example of this is a, uh, a photovoltaic cell. Um, if you've ever, you know, you've got a photo cell that can, that can turn lights on in your parking lot. Um, that's actually a photovoltaic cell that's able to um, absorb the rays from the sun and then create an electrical charge from the rays of the sun. So it, it's just a matter of the proper material absorbing that radiation, I think is what it is. Um, so the, the ghost seems to be made from the proper material and is imbued with the power to actually make use of this radiation. That's just wasted on every, on everything else. Well, it's just, if you think of photosynthesis, that's a chemical reaction, right? Mm-hmm. How that actually works. Well, it's not purely a chemical reaction. It's a chemical reaction in the plant. It's, it's a, a synthesis of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if our ghost shell was designed by whomever, whether it's the traveler or some other being or character, if our ghost is designed to be able to be a conduit for natural light to come in like a solar panel to be able to Mm -hmm. distribute to other beings, namely us for supers and whatnot. Where would that originally come from? Would the, the thing is, is like, we know the traveler can create biological advancements, but is there any other instance that we know that it created mechanical advancements? I mean, other than introducing the idea of the golden age and all the mechanical yeah, terra- terraforming but that was not, capabilities of that. That came that's the bi- that came from us though. It opened not, not us all, up to that. Uh, not all of it. I mean there there is a degree that it sparked the golden age, but like the knowledge was given from it. Wait, the Right, but also, without the knowledge, we would not have been able to create the different things to do a lot of it. It right, just right, right. advanced. It just advanced our capabilities to be able to distinguish the mathematics and all the other stuff. The uh, what was it? The math. The <clears throat> God, what slipper, was the slippery, slippery irreality of light. Right. So it gave us the ability to do it ourselves to an extent by giving us a supercharge with its uh, its own terraforming capabilities. So it, it modified us first, and then when we were able to use the knowledge that we gained from some of the transformation and studying it, and because, what was his name? Jacob Hardy actually talked about studying light itself and learning about the mathematics and in, in some of the cards with Jacob Hardy. So did the Traveler actually create anything mechanical? I I would argue indirectly. Okay. And, and and then I would kind of say what is creating something. Um it empowered us to advance our ability for creation. Right. I as far as looking at the traveler as a factory that's spitting out ghosts, I think that's probably um a little too on the nose. Like that's not that's that's not I think the way it the way it went down. And I would agree. I don't think the ghosts came directly from the traveler, like the embodiment of what we have as the ghost. Mm-hmm. Maybe the the if you want to call it a being inside did, 
the being that basically was asleep when Sagira took over Argo's shell. But the shell itself, I don't think, came from the Traveler. I would agree with that. Yeah. And if you if you go back and you actually um, go to the Ghost Fragment Ghosts card, which is a really good one, mm-hmm. um, and it, it kind of sets the scene for presumably what, what's going on inside the Traveler. I mean, that's big presumably, but... Um, it does make mention of um, it's a place still fat with life and an abundance of sentient souls, some decent, maybe a few of lesser quality, and everybody stands stands about or floats about, or they bounce between dimensions. Um, so there's an abundance of of personalities and and consciousnesses inside what we know as the traveler and it's not uh, oh. what, we, what we know as the traveler is is not you know it's 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 not a traditional representation of space and time so the traveler is a collective consciousness no don't go there. I, uh, no, no, it's not a collective consciousness. I would say the traveler, <laughs> the traveler is more. Is more. You're getting like close. To, you're a, getting close to Anna's theory on the traveler. I yeah, know. It, I know. Is more like a realm than a than a collective consciousness. So, like a basic. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna smack you. A Don't quantum. I'm not gonna do it. I'm thinking. I'm thinking scientifically. I'm going the other direction. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Like quantum physics. Uh, there's if in the quantum level things pop in and out of existence and in and out of dimensions all the time. That's part of the reason mm-hmm. why the quantum level is so bizarre because it doesn't follow what we would see on a macro level. Mm-hmm. Could the traveler have something similar to that, where things are popping in and out of existence within it? Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a it's a quanta yes. trap. It's a quanta trap. It's... it's like a fly trap, but way Whoa. way way scarier. I, th- I think it's not only possible. I think it's. I think it's a certainty just from the wording of this, from the, from the wording of this card. It's. I mean, they, they talk of, um, souls bouncing between dimensions. Um, and that that one's not me. That's not on me. <laughs> yeah, that one's my puppies. Uh, yeah, yeah. So they they talk about souls bouncing between dimensions. Uh, and then, um, just the, the envelopment, the envelopment that, that happens, uh, uh, enveloping planets and, and the, the, the magnitude and the scale Mm -hmm. that it takes to carve up all the worlds, um, with that rubble, they, they fashioned a topologically creative enclosure, a twisting space of time sealed behind doors that admit only those who know the magic words. So it is a very timey wimey wibbly wobbly. Um just just it's a place wrought with uh you know kind of anachronistic and uh just things that don't make a lot of sense when you're using causal terms. Right. It's just it's one of those things that no, we've all taken for granted for so long. The fact that we've had this ghost shell. And I don't know if anybody's ever really talked about this all that much. Aside from people like within Discord chats that I've seen talking about it recently. This is not a concept I've heard that much about. All right. So what? real quick. So what we're what I'm hearing us dance around is the question of the potential of what basically comes down to uh, hang on real quick uh, comes down to what's known in philosophical circles and yes green i'm just going to go ahead and take the plunge on this one um what's coming what's come down to what's called cartesian dualism right it's uh, mm-hmm. it's the it's the argument of the interaction between, on the one hand, the immaterial and the material. Uh, so, 
for those who aren't comfortable with philosophy, what that means is basically uh, you have arguably in Cartesian, which is uh, based off Rene Descartes, uh, his his particular theories. Uh, a Cartesian dualism is uh, usually if referred to whenever whenever someone makes a joke about the ghost in the machine, and I'm gonna I'm gonna explain that because that's it's often it's quoted. Really, it's it's, it's yeah. completely misquoted, and it's that's why it bugs me is because the concept of ghost in the machine is actually I'll, I'll, I'm gonna get to it, but so the ghost in the machine conundrum is really what is involved with the interaction between immaterial and material or in in more of a layman's term the spirit and the body right so you have the physical body the material element and then you have the spirit or the soul or whatever the immaterial so what what it is is how do how do those things interact because by their very nature they can't they can't interact the immaterial is necessarily not able to connect with the material. And there's there's a lot of issues with dualism and monoism. Um, and so philosophically and from a historical perspective, uh, the ghost in the machine concept was actually not coined by Descartes. It was a uh, phrase that was coined by a British philosopher uh, who, go, who Gilbert Ryle. And it was, it was, it was making was, fun of him he was critiquing Cartesian dualism. So it was actually after Descartes wrote his, his entire thesis. Um, so right. And this was in 1949, uh, which is, it's, it's a very 1949, 1950 was a very interesting year for, for philosophy for a number of reasons. But basically what happened was Ryle in 1949 wrote a, a book called the concept of mind. And in that book, he actually criticizes the dualism theory that was presented by cart, uh, which is also known as the mind body dualism. And basically what he did was the entire concept of ghost and machine. He used to highlight the just absolute absurdity of the system because he said that mental activity, it, it, the idea that mental activity carries on in parallel to physical action, but where the means of interaction between the mind and body was unknown or speculative at best, it really bugged him. Because he's like, if you can't, if you can't build, if you can't show me the proof of this interaction, then building on and making these giant models and all these detailed issues that, that it's just stupid. Uh, so he actually, the, the phrase was actually dogma of the ghost in the machine. And that's what he referred to as the mind body dualistic theory was he viewed as unsound. He said that instead that both Cartesian theory and the behavioristic model, which are basically two extremes on the spectrum in regards to the concept of uh, what we call mind, um, he, he viewed both of those as too rigid and actually too rigid or too mechanic mechanistic to provide an acceptable understanding of the concept of mind. So he, he didn't really accept monism, but he also didn't really accept dualism. So he kind of was he was actually kind of in the middle between the two. So in basically what he came at, he he ultimately argued was that mental processes are merely intelligent acts. There are no mental processes that are distinct from intelligent acts, which basically means that the operations of the mind are not merely represented by intelligent acts. They are the same like they, they are those intelligent acts. Um, and the, the important thing of this whole book or this whole work is that this was actually one of the biggest founding documents in the field to philosophy of the mind, which wasn't recognized as a separate philosophy or a separate school of philosophy until after 1950. So, so Ryle was actually his critique of Descartes, which gave us the phrase ghost of the machine. The reason that's, that's very important in philosophy is that that was the opening of the door, which led to the philosophy of the mind, which is a branch of philosophy that studies the nature of the mind, uh, including the mind body problem, the hard problem of consciousness, which is again, related to the ghost conversation and actually even the nature of particular mental states. So that, that leads into, uh, what would be later really kind of explored in psychology, especially, um, but within the mind body problem, itself there are actually two central schools of thoughts and that is dualism which is usually uh 
You'll see that divided further later on into substance and property dualist. And then there's also monism, which is basically the argument that the mind and body are not ontologically di- distinct entities, that they're the same. And so usually with a um, with a monoistic thought uh, theory, you would see this in uh, Skinner, who's very behavioristic, operant conditioning. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the argument that there is no... Um, there is no, uh, I use this term loosely, will. You, you are completely a product of your, of your, uh, your upbringing, uh, which in its, Skinner in and of was its, the guy who did the really awful experiments too. Wasn't he the one who did the, oh, the, the white, dog experiment? No, that's Pavlov. Was, uh, or was Pavlov, that, Pavlov did the dog. Was this the monkey guy? Uh, no, uh, Skinner was the one that had the Skinner box, um, which was a theory. Uh, he he was the one that he was impossible to debate with because his debate pract- or his debate strategy was if he ever got back to in- into a corner, he would just basically refuse to acknowledge anything and def- basically his defense was, oh well, this is what I was. I am programmed to do this. I am programmed to do that. Like it was. Reading, He's a reading, tantrum. Yeah, reading Skinner debates is like you can tell when someone was winning a debate with him because he just started like repeating the same answer over and over. It was really, right. it's really frustrating. But um, and so yeah, so like Ryle's Ryle's views actually kind of brought this really into question because he kind of started the path of of a a view that was between the two. Right. He, he's like, there's not necessarily it's and he kind of started the idea of the hybridization of the nature nurture debate. Um, sorry. Yes. OK. Penn's got it in chat. I just saw that in uh-huh. chat. Uh, Schrodinger uh-huh. is the Schrodinger is the paradoxical cat who is alive and dead uh-huh. and, until you open the box and then then you'll find out. Uh, well, he's alive and dead and he is, any yes. number of yeah. possibilities in between alive Correct. and dead. <laughs> he, he, he is a perfect paradox. Did it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, uh, so, so Ryle is actually, when you say ghost in the machine, you're actually making fun of the concept of the ghost in the machine. It's it's actually that's that's the history of that phrase. That's why I kind of get like perturbed when people say ghost of the machine like it's like this. It's not a Cartesian dualism. Um, But yeah, so like the problem here for ghost really seemed to kind of come down to the location of the ghost. Right. And this is the this is the big question for, I think, in larger thing, even exos inside the destiny Mm -hmm. universe and actually even arguably artificial intelligence in the real world. You know, what, what is, what does it mean to be a sentient conscious person? Does it mean that you have flesh and blood? Does it mean that you have the capacity of self awareness? What is self awareness? You know, this, these are these are all what's what's really interesting. These are all questions that philosophy of the mind kind of they they tackle. Um, that's you know that's the question of consciousness. What what is what is it to be conscious? You know, what is it to question your own awareness and you know that? Um, as far as ghosts go, I think. I, I kind of agree with the idea that the ghost is not the shell. There is a literal ghost in the shell. Um, and this is just my, my personal opinion, though I think that kind of makes the most sense because you see that with within the, the transference of ghost shells. You know, like we see like the heretical pancake shells, right, that we all are mm-hmm. talking about for, for the dawning and for Curse of Osiris. Um, you see, uh, there was an introduction in Destiny One of the spiny shells, right? You had shells that had oh, spines on them, yeah. right? You know, five ghosts, five ghosts, majority ghosts, types, yeah. ghosts, ghosts with prickly personalities. You know, I, I love, I love some of the explanations on some of the flavor text here, <laughs> but um, I think that also is seen within the Sagira Sagira ghost situation where Sagira kind of puts Ghost to sleep and Mm -hmm. takes over his shell. Well, the only way really that can work is if there is not a hardware component, because 
if it was <clears throat> if it was like a if it was like a computer program, right? So if it was just a hundred percent computer program, how does that how does that compute? Like because you need hardware requirements. You can't you you can't download two two operating systems on the same drive without doing a number of special particular tasks in which to en- enable that hard drive to have those shell or to have those multiple programs. So, and, and there's a lot of there, there, there's that's a gross oversimplification of that entire problem. But a number one component is, I mean, so go go get your smartphone and try to load up programs beyond the memory capacity. You can't because there's a hardware restriction to software. There, there is a hardware restriction. There, there is, there is only so much space that memory can take up. Um, whereas, if you have a consciousness, you know, a soul. What is the what is the definition of that? Where does that soul mm-hmm. reside? Does it reside in the head? You know, there, there was depending on the culture and the time, even within reality, you have a number of different theories on the the home of the soul. A lot of ancient cultures believed that to be, you know, anywhere from the heart to the stomach. Um, some thought it was the kidney. I mean, they're they're pick pick an organ in the body, and there is probably a culture out there that has at some point or time viewed that as the the seat of the soul. Now, a lot of the Western culture, you know, which is now the dominant kind of school of thought within Western philosophy, obviously, but like a lot of the Western philosophy views it as the head because that's where the brain is. Um, I mean, but look at Egyptian mythology. The Egyptians viewed the brain as a wasted organ. Mm -hmm. And that's why if you look at, you know, burial rites of the Egyptians, they scrambled the brain and they pulled it out your nose because they didn't care about it. The organs that they cared about were the heart, the stomach, you know, those the the central organs to the center of the body, the center mass. They viewed that the they brain could tell as, actually did something. Right, right. And and I mean, right. And so then you also have, you know, in in earlier in earlier fields of psychology, you have, you know, like fr- uh, phrenology, for example, which is the diagramming of the brain to try to find the the seat of consciousness. Uh, that's where you get like a lot of exploration into the such things as like the hippocampus and the frontal lobe. And, you know, you have lobotomies that that was a huge thing for lobotomies before we kind of realized that that is not a good idea. Um, At least not to cure a headache. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Gage, Phineas Gage might disagree with you, but for most people, lobotomies were not a good idea. Um but I mean, and so like the the exploration of of consciousness, I think, and this is just you know, this isn't even regarding the video game, but just the idea of the question of a literal ghost in the shell. You know, that is a very, very relevant question, especially in today's world, because in today's world we are also facing the question of we have we have arguably sentient AIs now. You know, there's I know a lot of people are making fun of it, but there is a AI that has been granted citizenship in our world. There is an AI that is recognizably self-aware enough that it has arguably been given citizenship in the in this world. And so that begs in Europe, wasn't it? Dubai. Yeah, I think I think it was Dubai. I want to say it was Dubai. Well, and then Google had the the AI that taught itself to walk. Yes. 3D simulation yeah. and then that's scary but yeah and yes. then people freaked out about that but i mean but but i'm what i'm saying is like i i understand what you guys are what or agreeing what you're saying about like the clovis bray connection i i think that that does hold some water my question my my counter argument to that however is this and and i i'm i'm curious how your answer here but like if that was the case if clovis bray or whoever, you know, Ishtar, whatever, if we figured out that, because arguably they did figure out something similar with the Exos, right? I mean, mm-hmm. whether that's, whether that turns out to be a, um, a nod to Asimov with the positronic brain or a continuation of the frame exploration from Ishtar, you know, whatever that is, they did do something similar with the Exos because they are, they are seeding human consciousnesses within a purely mechanical body. 
so we know that there is a a connection somewhere that they have digitized at least to a degree consciousness but let's say clovis bray created the shells that would lead to ghosts so my first question is what why why did they do that um why would they build the ghost like were they supposed to be like and this is just a rhetorical question at this point Mm -hmm. but like would it be like a drone like would it be like what you see with the fallen with the shanks, you know, like what, what is this going on? Um, but my other question is if that, if that was the case and I, I, this almost answers itself, but why is there only a limited amount of ghosts? Okay. Thought process one, like when you, the, for the first question, what if the ghosts were originally created to help go into the Vex simulation? Right, like drone. Yeah, okay. Maybe not a drone, but like a connection to Rasputin, the AI that was helping them navigate and whatnot. There's no, there's no grimoire card suggesting right, 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 this right. whatsoever. Okay, I see, I this is just a saying. hypothetical. This is a potential branch off the uh, the proxy frames that mm-hmm. they were using. Okay, okay. Right. So this is just a hypothetical, more than anything. So what if it was created in that kind of context to help with navigating new things or help with developing more access to the quote unquote light technology like they were trying to do on Titan Mm -hmm. as miniature, whether or not they're drones or assistants or something like that. As right. The second question, I and that's that's basically all that I've got on that. That was just like my first knee jerk reaction to it. Um, your second question, I blanked on it real quick because I was more focused on the first one. If we if we had the means to create ghosts, why is there only a limited number of them? Because and now to be fair, we don't know, but the the impression is is that you know there's only X amount of ghosts, and that number is not increasing. Clovis Bray is not around anymore, or at least as far as the production of everything. True. So I guess my, okay. Um, let me read, let me, okay. That's, that's true. I, I will accept that. However, we do see an increase in the creation of ghost shells. So we can remake them, but if the technology to extract whatever, if the ghosts themselves are in consciousness extracted, that were put in the shells pri- before they were transferred into exo bodies, because it could be a pre- precursor to exos. Okay, I see. I see your. I see the. Okay, I'm. I'm following that. Okay, that's mm-hmm. okay. So you're 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 saying that the ghosts were a medium. They were kind of an in between step before the creation of exos, maybe. Possibly. It's there's so, no nothing to support other, it, but it's I mean just the an other idea. the other thing too. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, no, you're okay. The other the other point that I was gonna say is like we have all these ghost shells lying around, and like that would explain dead ghosts um, to a degree because they're mm-hmm. they're uh, whatever the dualistic connection between the immaterial and the material for a ghost is a dead ghost would have arguably that hard drive has been broken in some capacity um which would explain why they are not able to contain anything and Mm -hmm. it also it also would point to the fact that (sighs) the traveler didn't create them initially well because like here's here's my argument for this if you if you take a step back and you think we have all these ghost shells that are able to transfer existing ghosts into, right? So like, for example, I have Segura's shell pulled up right now. Mm-hmm. This is this is not my ghost standard shell. I was I transferred that ghost to a, to a Segura shell. Like this is assuming mm-hmm. that, the, and of course this is, this is going off the assumption that our aesthetic changing of ghost shells as a game mechanic is actually meant to be connected in lore. So let's assume that let's assume that we can modify, which we've seen some guardians modify. So it's, it's a pretty safe assumption. However, at the end of the destiny two campaign, the traveler emitted a massive blast of light. Now, right. The problem here is that up until the end of the campaign, 
our guardian was arguably the only guardian that had the capabilities of light, of paracausal powers. Mm-hmm. After, after the campaign was completed and that blast of light was, was sent out, that was when a lot of the guardians regained their power. So, so my question there is all those inanimate ghost shells that were lying around perfect condition, why were they not imbibed with light and then became ghosts themselves? Because they don't have the consciousness to direct them. The thing is, the the ghost, our ghost has a, a personality, which is something that's bugged me for the entire time Destiny's been around. Why right, would right. something, why does it have a personality? Why does well, it that's have... Where, that, yeah, that's where Anna's theory of the Traveler being a, an arc, like literally mm-hmm. an arc that saved a civilization. That's what I'm is. with that. Yeah, she, she did you were you not, did you read that email that she sent? It was a really well right. done. For someone no, who's never played I, for someone who's never played this video game, she has a really interesting theory about the traveler. Mm-hmm. But okay, so yeah, okay. So you're saying you were saying that it's because they don't they didn't have a a consciousness already within them? Right, because when our ghost lost the light, when we lost the light originally, our ghost was not dead. Our ghost still had some power, some capability, some right. innate. Just, they just didn't have mm-hmm. the the ability to resurrect us. They didn't have the capacity to channel light. Right. They didn't have the the I guess the radio signal anymore because there was nothing being sent out. Right. It was being jammed. Yeah, but, the radio jammed. But well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, real quick. Let her let her finish because I'm I'm just sorry. I just want to hear. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, it's just the if the radio was jammed, essentially, and our ghost, which still was alive, it didn't die from it. It didn't have its consciousness stripped from it, like we've seen the uh, wizards and stuff like that from the hive actually do to the ghost. The shells that are lying around that don't have a directive or don't have a consciousness within them would not have come alive with the light. The light is just the power source. It's not the actual ghost. Okay. All right, Justin, what was, what were you going to say? Oh no, I was just going to say there's, well, it, it just depends on how you see the ghost. Like I, I think there are, um, well, I don't think there are, I know there are a couple different types of memory and, um, in you know our world and computers and i think you can probably apply those those two models to um to the ghost model and you could say that they're they're probably volatile um components to the ghost's personality and his performance and things meaning it requires um the 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 light to to retain to retain that 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 component of the ghost's you know existence its personality its its a uh, you know its sensory function uh, the the fact they can interact with its surroundings but i think there's also possibly a non-volatile component to the ghost and and when i say non-volatile like volatile and non-volatile memory are are two different types of memory. One uh, non-volatile memory would be like a flash drive. So it doesn't matter if a flash drive is is plugged into your computer, has power on it or anything, you can unplug it and put it in your backpack and keep it there for a year. When you plug it into a computer next, it'll still have all its data on it. That's how I view a, a dead ghost. Right, as a right. I agree with a that. USB yeah. stick. Right. Yeah, a USB stick. Um but I think there are probably volatile components as well to a ghost that meaning like um loss of power is the loss of the of the component. You know, um and I just I just mean it, it just because a ghost shell is down does not necessarily mean that when the that it cannot be resurrected easily because i think there's there's a very real component of 
of there being a non-volatile um, kind of architecture there that allows the ghost to be rebooted. Pins is going to be like, oh my god, he ruined that. <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, I, I kind of agree with that, the, the segregation between volatile and involatile memory as far as the ghost, because it does. It does make sense as far as dead ghosts are concerned. Um, that's exactly the, the feeling I've got, is that they're, they're basically reduced to thumb drives. Um, and you, and you see that even within like, you know, Yagi's host, right? The seven ghosts that came back and they were corrupted. They were corrupted so badly that they couldn't figure out what was going on with them. It's like, which is the exact opposite of a normal dead ghost situation. Cause they had their involatile mem- or they had their volatile memory, but they didn't have their involved. Like they, their hard drive had gotten corrupted, but they were still, the component was still there. So they were still mm-hmm. able to move, but they had basically Alzheimer's. Like they had for they arguably were not able to transfer the data in an understandable in an understandable manner, and so they couldn't tell what was going on with them. But I mean, yeah, exactly. In chat, that's that's the question: is um, you know, where does the consciousness come from? Mm-hmm. I think that's here's, that's the million dollar question when it comes to ghosts. And here's the thing I want to point out. And I'm sure Beard will be cheering in the background if if he's listening. I think he's playing and, and resting right now, which is good. But the only person who has told us that the ghost came from the Traveler is the Speaker, who is also a Risen, who was Risen by a ghost, who would not have been there when it was happening. So we're getting this. Mm, yep, that's. I mean, and that's. It's a very from valid somebody point. who's. We're getting a dialogue from somebody who was not there. All right. So arguably, exactly. arguably, you could say that his ghost could have informed him of that. But then you have the question. You still have the question of bias within the information. Mm-hmm. I mean, and and I and, and I completely would recognize the ghost that, know it right. itself. I mean, it's just one of those. It's one of those things. It's like, right. And with the with the introduction of the fall of Osiris webcomic, we kind of get a better feeling of the speaker's personality at that time, which is not at all his personality that we see within game. He was much more um, rigid and strict about what was what was allowed, you know, in in the city and the thought processes that were that were allowed to be voiced. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For anyone, anyone who hasn't read the web comic, just, just go read the web comic and it'll make oh, sense. It's so good. It's so good. I think, I think I like that presentation of him because it also shows growth within his character because you, you see the character of the speaker in the web comic and then go. So like read the web comic and then go get the Osiris Grimoire card and read that. And you can see the change in his in his demeanor towards Osiris. Oh yeah. It's just towards the end of that comic. Oh, it just, just in nineteen eighty four, you know. Yeah. yeah. Just 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 that. Yeah. Yeah. It was very Fahrenheit four fifty one, nineteen eighty four esque. Environment. I love you, Rick Bradbury. Oh, <laughs> Bradbury. Um, that book was banned from my school library for some reason. What Fahrenheit? Mm-hmm. I uh, mm. yeah, they're they're it it yeah. Yeah, they didn't they didn't burn it, did they? <laughs> no, there was no book burning in Southwest Kansas. <laughs> luckily, sometimes I wonder, but not that time. Uh, <laughs> okay. Just making that's sure. a fair question. It's that a, is a fair, fair question. question. It's a really funny because question too. But I was just, that was, I was just wondering for if if I needed someone to ask me what is irony, and that would be know, like that's exactly <laughs> what I was. This is irony. Yes. Thank you. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah, there were there were some other components of that book too, not just the book burning that were probably mm-hmm. a good reason to question it. No, I grew up in a rural area and we outlawed the reading of Animal Farm. It's okay. I understand your pain. What was the one what was the one that I we got in Animal trouble? Animal Farm. We got in trouble for what was the it was like Mammoth Hunter? Mammoth Hunter? Yeah, it was some weird it, it was like this really dumb book. But it was like it was really risque. And so they were like, oh no everyone's banning books so they just like it felt like they just like randomly picked that book and they were like this isn't allowed i'm like this has no bearing on anything but okay so Uh, silly it was it was like you could just all right whatever guys um do we want to do some like thoughts not as heavy things i think we've been doing a lot of thoughts no 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 thoughts thoughts on future designs Oh. I want to. I want to okay. know what what type of heretical flapjacks are we looking at for 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 ghost in the future? Fidget spinner. <laughs> that would be amazing. Like instead of it, like instead of ghosts, like I just want to be able to go from resurrection. <laughs> I just want them to spin. Like I just want to spin them. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. I would totally have that. Who wouldn't? I would grind for that. Uh huh. I'd do lost sectors for that. If we had like one that had like a little bike bell, little trigger thing, like if I don't know, it's just Damn. lopsided ghost Vegemite without hesitation. Justin was waiting for this one. Uh-huh. Good spinners. Okay, I was here's not, not messing I'm around. I'm done. Now. I don't even have anything to compete with that. Okay, here's a different question. What is your favorite shell in D2? Because we talked about the community's favorite shell. In D2? Well, D2 or D1. We'll just say okay. any of the ghost shells, any of the 120 Are we, ghost are we shells. not allowed to say Sagira? The one that I, we all want to say? Yes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we, <all> love <laughs> we are not allowed to say Sagira because we held the community to that, too. Mm, I feel like I'm not subject to those same rules because <laughs> I didn't... You definitely follow the rules, middle. so... Uh, yeah, so, Sagira. <laughs> no, um... So, uh, before before there was Sagira, we lived in darkness. Dark times, those were. Um, uh, I think before Sagira, <laughs> the, the, sh- the first time that I really felt um, passionate about the, about the shell, you know, my ghost... Was the poop ghost? Oh God, I forgot, the poop ghost. Poop I forgot about the poop ghost. I forgot about the poop ghost. The sugary shell. Um, who does? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. A, it wasn't sugary shell. Was it not? No, sugary was, shell. Sugary shell was the, was the one. red one. Oh, okay, whatever it was called. I mean, who doesn't want to just be able to break off a piece <laughs> of? Like break off a piece bar? of uh, a poop ghost and just dip it in some Vex milk. You know what I mean? Who doesn't want to do calm that? Calm down, Devram. <laughs> yes, yes. I do say, sir. This seems scrum diddlyumptious. <laughs> so poop ghost, <laughs> if not Sagira <laughs> shell. Mm-hmm. I, and and do you know what the Segura shell thing isn't isn't the perks or anything? Because I literally after I I love, after I, I, love this. I shell, remember this conversation. I, I was literally like, <laughs> I'm never going back to Mercury ever. If I never see fans again, ever. It's okay with I told him I told him I was like I was, I was I was I was talking to him. I was like, Oh man, Segura shell actually helps with farming Mercury stuff. He's like, You went back? <laughs> He's like, I'm not touching that planet ever again. I'm not going ever again. Like, seriously. Oh, tr- I used trigger the trigger has corrected us. Sugary was the poop ghost. Crimson was the red one. I got uh, I knew I was right. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so that that was my favorite just because because of reasons. But yeah. I it, honestly the ghost is the type of cosmetic thing that in general I've ignored for a long time. But mm-hmm. when you get one that's chocolate, 
I remember you nearly broke Bell. <laughs> you called it a poop ghost. It's it true, does. though. It it it's the only ghost that doesn't have an eye. Ooh. Did it not have an eye? It doesn't Those have a really glowy tacky. eye. It's oh, it doesn't have a glowy a eye. Joke. Okay, it's got the spot for it, but there's no glowy <laughs> oh, eye. Oh God, the phrasing won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, you're right. It does it. That's really funny. Mm-hmm. For ghosts who enjoy the sweet taste of crucible victories. Mm-hmm. I wish the... No, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, so... <laughs> All right, Green, what about you? <laughs> My favorite ghost shell between D1 and D2... I actually really... I'm going to kind of do a cop-out. I really like the Lambda shell. Because the lam- lambda stands for wavelength, and mm-hmm. I like math, and I like music, and music's wavelengths. And I don't actually like the color of the shell, but I like the the meaning and the lore behind it. That's I was mine. surprised that Justin didn't go with the garter snake. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> I saw somebody had made a picture of the garter snake's <laughs> shell with a snake coming out of the eye hole. Okay, I may have made that up, but the community should totally make that and send that to you. Gross. <laughs> Gross and or rude. <laughs> Snick a snake. Snick a snake. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Um, but you know what's cool about Sagira? The Sagira shell. I know everyone wants to say the Sagira shell. And... What is cool about Sagira is Sagira is unique, and I like I like the the um, the display of different fragments that yeah. circle. I I love that. That's what I really like. Yeah. So that's what the game needs more of. Like the the original Ghost design is amazing, and it's a geometric shape that. It's really hard to like work out in your head the the like the the machinations of it, but um, I feel like a lot of the new shells are so static, like the Waffle House ghosts that we're so you know like familiar with now. It I don't know, like it's it just comes up and it looks like a Bluetooth speaker that follows you around. <laughs> um, I just am not a big fan. Like, um, it it looks like I, I I don't even know what it looks like, but it looks like the newest version of the game Simon. Um, you know, just where you <laughs> touch each side, and maybe at some point it says "bop it," and then you twist it. And you <laughs> it. I, I don't know, but like there should be some just, flavor text like that. Bop it. Like twisted. <laughs> Spin it. Crazy. Uh, anyway. Yes. Yeah, no, I just I, I really like I I like Sagira because Sagira looks like sh- you can tell that that is Osiris's ghost. For sure. Sorry, I'm hard at work <laughs> on something. <laughs> You're so rude. I'm so rude. So sorry. It's not rude. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's amazing because you had no idea. Let's just say if you go and check out my Twitter, I managed to put blue all over the tower. I'm actually he's had kind of Segura impressed. Up like I'm impressed. And get him back to his spot before he actually would get out of his menu because so- he's been in his menu the entire time. Yeah, because it's, we're talking about ghost shells, so I'm showing uh-huh. the ghost shells in the stream. Yes, you are doing a great job, and I am putting you as a new and apparently, monarchy, apparently, new uh, monarchy fan. Apparently, that's a lie. Apparently, I've also been taking candid photos of different site <laughs> areas of the tower. It's amazing. So, I think it should be a thing. Like, if your friends go idle, <laughs> oh, in it the is. Tower, I just you should didn't. do. Oh, God, you should take them all over the place and just pose them. (laughs) Yes, this is what I've been doing during the entire episode, by the way. Um, 
as far as oh man favorite ghost shell yeah blue i i'd have to say like the dread explorer um is that the one with the barnacles on it no no uh oh that was the siva shell no, yeah, no, that was Siva. I didn't. I wasn't a fan of the Siva shell. I like the Dread Explorer just simply because I like the color scheme of the Dread Explorer. It's, it's black and gray. Uh, it's it's actually different shades of black, and the eye was one of the first eyes that we got that was not solid blue. It was actually a purple tinge to it. I remember. Um, <laughs> which was which to me was I really I really liked that. Um, but. It also was like one of the first ones that you actually got like a t- really tangible bonus from having. Um, because it was previous- for the dreadnought, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, but it was like you could you actually like it was a noticeable, like a noticeable buff to things. Um, but it that and it just I mean it was it was a it was a um, I mean I'm also I'm a big fan of just the general shell. Like just that simple, clean, you know, very, very basic uh, shell. I really, I really like. I think it's a very iconic look. I think that, as far as like the aesthetics go, they knocked it out of the park with that. Um, I'm not a fan of the uh, the Waffle House or the Heretical Pancakes. Yes. Mm. Like I'm not, I'm not a fan of them. I, 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 I have them so that I'll equip them because they, you know, like for the strikes and for like the bonuses and stuff like mm-hmm. that they offer. But honestly, I'm yeah. aesthetically, I'm, I'm, I'm with Justin on that one. I feel yes. like I'm pulling out my home, home entertainment speaker. It's you, yeah, I mean, you pledge house waffle, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That's well done. Well done. <laughs> I do like the <laughs> ability they have to actually add a lot of artistic flair to them. I like the fact that we can do shaders on them now. Right. But I don't I actually don't like the design personally as well. Oh, I think they yeah, look like, like of the I, of the what's like, it, the pancakes? Yeah, no. Right. Like well, I mean yeah. there's there's actually just five different basic designs for ghost shells. And that's my least favorite. What do you, what do you, what do you identify? What do you identify the, the pancakes as? I think I identify them as pancakes. No, I guess (laughs) I I identify them as a satellite dishes, satellite dishes dishes. with the smartphone. eye. right. So (laughs) I just like that. Oh my God. I just like the smartphone. eye. like that just makes so much sense. Right. It, they took our, or they took our smartphone kiosk and put them on the ghost. <laughs> I like you, it. Oh, I we mean, have a- you laugh, but we're not that far away from that. Like right. already, right now, there are drones that you can put in follow mode, and they'll just follow you. No, nope. so nope. imagine they- if that functionality was merged with a smartphone. And your smartphone followed you. Would they also be bad style. at opening doors? Um. Well, yeah, maybe. Probably. Here's a good question from chat. Do we have a name for our ghost? Do we call uh-huh. our ghost by a name? Little light. But, like, are, are, like, have we named our ghost, Role like, play. personally? Yeah, like, a, like, personally? Yeah, like a, mm-hmm. Yes, I have a name for my ghost. Really? Mm-hmm. What's his name? Is I'm not. Name I'm not Neville? answering that question. No, Neville is Finchurch's ghost. I would never steal yeah. someone else's ghost name. Even though hmm. one apparently is named after Dexter's laboratory. Dee 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 Dee. Wrong character. Um. No, I didn't go through the through the. Uh, you know, I'm not D and D guy, so I didn't go through that. Yeah, that you're talking. You're talking. Yeah, you're talking to someone who's like super into RPGs. So yeah, I have each of my guardians has a name, and each of my guardians' ghosts have their own names as well. Okay, well, I'm with you. You know, I actually didn't. I, I am slowly merging into being my Awoken character. I was telling mm-hmm. Justin before the show that I actually bought some some hair wax that is supposed to be a temporary hair dye. 
And I'm going to have a green mm. faux hawk for Guardian Con, so I match if my you, character. If you dye that beautiful hair, I'm I'm going to be upset. It's not it's not permanent. It literally washes out at at the end of the day. It's just like a tint. <laughs> well, that's it's just fine. It's defensive. You're going to you're going to put a tint on your head. I had purple <laughs> and blue hair two summers ago. It's fine. Huh? Yeah. I had put purple and blue hair like two summers ago because. I didn't care at that point because I wasn't teaching. Well, if you're going to put a tent on your head, I'm wearing hammer pants. Heck yeah. (laughs) We're going to have a dance off. Oh. And we'll get Uni to join us with some of his uh, bell Bell bottoms. His bell bottoms. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Um, Let's see. Well, actually, talking about named ghosts, that is actually a thing. That is actually a thing in the in the lore of Destiny, right? Like mm-hmm. the ghosts, which I mean, kind of lays the groundwork. And not only are they named, but they actually we actually see ghosts having uh, identifiable genders. Right. Uh, for for example, for example, DD Marcus Wren's ghost is female. Um, Saint Fourteen's ghost, we don't know her name, but it, she was identified as a female. Um, I'm trying to think. Finn Church's ghost. I don't. I mean, his name is Neville, so I'm assuming it's a male. But I don't want to be presumptuous. Mm-hmm. But I I'm thought pretty, it was Aaron, Aaron I'm, Neville. I'm pretty sure is he. It's a he. Um, now, granted, like some of the other ghost, like the Vanguard ghosts, we don't really we have not been introduced to, uh, other than Cade. <laughs> Which is like one of the best cutscenes ever. Oh in God, Cade like pulling his Cade. ghost down. <laughs> shh, 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 shh. Get back here! Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like that's it's still one of my favorite favorite little cutscenes. Oh, here's a question: mm-hmm. Is our ghost like a reflection of us? You know how people tend to that's get dogs where I was that gonna... are a reflection of us. Well, is the ghost a reflection of us, or are we a reflection of the ghost? Hmm. Because see, I would or, argue, I would argue that we are reflections of the ghost. Or are but we? What about- are we reflections of each other? No. Kumbaya. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the because the, only the reason, thing is like the reason why I say that. Wise. Well, yeah, the reason I say that is because with uh, some of the some of the lost like Easter eggs from Destiny mm-hmm. One. We know that the ghost and the guardian have reached an agreement prior to the resurrection of the guardian. Right. Uh, there, there is a, a, like, I guess, verbal contract between the guardian and the ghost that has to be achieved before the guardian can be resurrected. Uh, you see that within uh, the Seraph armor set from Destiny 1. You also see that within Cade's, uh, the Easter egg scannable from Cade's stash. Uh, mm-hmm. Pod Pod Ten Two Hundred One, um, you know there there are repeated instances in which ghosts have been noted as having conversations with the guardian prior to resurrection, which opens up a whole new level of rabbit holes as far as like what exactly does that mean? Because um, mm-hmm. you know we know that your ghost can be. Not just with you. It's not like a predetermined thing. Correct. Because because of pod 10, 10 to 01, ghost, mm-hmm. the ghost has the capability of resurrecting whomever they choose. Now, part of that choice definitely seems to be the contractual agreement between the guardian in question and the ghost. So that does seem to be indicative that the guardian is in some way... Well, I, I is in more than just compatible with the ghost. There is an actual component of you know there is a reflective personality between the two of them. Um, yeah, just look at Sagira and Osiris. Right. I mean, that's mm-hmm. right. I mean, you've got that. You got. I mean, any of the ghosts that we have seen personality wise, you know, Dee Dee and Marcus. There's there's mm-hmm. a there's a there's a very strong relationship between the ghost and the guardian. And that's completely understandable. Once you start thinking about, you know, what exactly a ghost, a ghost is always by the side of the guardian. Like they are, they, they are close. They are the closest companion that a guardian has. So it would make perfect sense that 
they need to be a hundred percent in sync and and compatible. I mean, though, though that being said, that does not mean that they stay that way. Uh, because we have examples of guardians who fall out with their ghost, um, or send their ghost away or send their ghost away. And, and it takes a lot to send a ghost away. Uh, you see that with Dredge and Yor, uh, you know, where he, where he, you know, he, he kicks his ghost to the curb basically. But then you also kind of see that with Felwinter as well, where Felwinter's ghost within the Winter's Guile Lord entry, um, there's a degree in which his ghost is commanding him to do certain things that Felwinter's not entirely comfortable with. I mean, it sounds like he goes along with it. I'm hoping that we get some more details on that particular story. Mm-hmm. But like there is a degree in which the ghost does actually have a bit of of um I, <clears throat> seniority, I think is the wrong word, but it is kind of the connotation that I'm thinking of that the ghost gets to call some shots, especially at the beginning between the guardian and the ghost. Um, you know, you see that a lot with even within our ghost, it was it was a very strong we're going to go here. We're going to run this way, you know, for, for those of us who are in destiny one, um, you know, the, the introduction of our guardian being newly resurrected, our ghost was a hundred percent calling the shots. Right. You know, it, it was, it there was no question who was, who was calling the shots on that first mission. It was the ghost. He had to run into the mm-hmm. wall, pick up the rifle, shoot that thing, you know, we're going to, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to, you know, and so, I mean, I, I still have an outside theory that, you know, I know this annoys people when I say this, but I'm, I still have an outside theory that we're not actually playing the guardian. We're playing the ghost. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be a nice one to actually have a reveal to. I mean, it, it, it would make a lot of sense in a lot of different ways. Now it, it, there's some there's some issues with it. Um, it's it's definitely a spin foil theory. But you know, with mm-hmm. all that with all that we've seen with the ghost, I, I mean, it's to me it it's not a hundred percent far fetched. Um, it's something that is while on an outlier of a possibility, it's still still within the realm of slight possibility, especially with some of the introduction of potential reveals within the nine. Um. There's something we haven't talked about when it comes to ghost. Mm -hmm. Where do they go? In your backpack. We don't have a backpack. Well, I mean, that's game mechanic, I'm sure. But when you pull it out, it doesn't come from anywhere. It just materializes in your hand. Uh Uh-huh. The, thus is the magic of transmat. Right. Well, it also begs the question of are 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 they not just always there? You just can't see them. Yeah. They're not. I mean, to be fair, we've seen cloaking capabilities within the Destiny world. Mm-hmm. They also have like a sheen of light around them. I know. I love it. I love mm-hmm. it. It's also very flat. Uh, yeah, it's it's, very, it's, it's only two D. It's a very holographic presentation. Uh, there there are multiple sheens actually. At least on the Segura shell, there are. Um, there is a smaller one around the front, and then the larger one is actually around the the central radius of the sphere. Wow, um, and there's and there's actually on the Segura shell, there's one on the back spines as well. I wonder but, yeah. if that's because of the. the... I view it as a menu. <laughs> I, I'm like, like I, I literally view that as like the radial menu of, of our like, guardian. I have the new monarchy shell, shell put up, and it has just a singular disc around the the center. That's because oh, you're does. very single. Yeah, you're very single minded as a new you monarchy know, follower. As a know, new monarchy follower, yeah, that is that yeah. is very. You know, <laughs> run away, that's not run a away, bad thing. <laughs> run away, that's not a run bad away. Thing. <laughs> And I have evidence that Blue is a secret new monarchy oh, lover. So, you know, never stop let, pointing fingers. Never he, let you, you know, go into social spaces with me again. In your, 
in your defense, he did email me like seven or so tenets I needed to follow to continue to <laughs> I thought it was weird at the time, but turns out one of them um, is sort of one of them is working working Disney reflection or Disney references in. Um, do oh, one. okay. Oh, hey, I got one. Just give him a second. Here, one. he'll figure it out. I got one. I got one. Do it. We're, What's we're up? talking about reflections, right? Mm-hmm. Mulan. I like it. There's a song called Reflections. Is this? So you're gonna like make a man out of me? Or what's Heck yeah. Wait, no. What? It's no. <laughs> you were, you oh, God. <laughs> anyway, actually I saw I saw uh-huh. something in uh in chat. The uh Oh like the a idea thing? Yeah, a pertinent thing. Uh an idea that they actually transmat um within within you. Uh, yeah, I saw that too. Uh, I'm like, I, like I actually I That's like that. I like that and idea. You know, what I immediately thought of was the wand from Bright, but I'm yes, kind of, oh yeah, yes. like yeah, uh, yeah, we're gonna get like, stuck into that tangent again. Yes, but I was thinking like like the ghost is literally your heart. Mm. That you wear your heart out on your sleeve. Is Dude, that what you're saying, Blue? Yeah, yeah. You know, Have you seen mine? Is, it's it's I, full I of spikes and spines. Yeah, that sounds about right, and it's black. <laughs> it's black. Its name is Dread Explorer. <laughs> and, uh, and that makes sense because mine is named Sugary Shit. <laughs> 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 the poop I ghost. The yes. poop ghost. <laughs> Took a poop on my heart. Uh, <laughs> Yes. No. Um. Oh, oh, man. The the whole uh, the where does your ghost come from thing? Uh, I I actually like the idea that that it's always there. Um, you just don't see it because um, whether or not you see something has to do with the frequency at which light refracts and reflects off of it. So. If you could actually manipulate that, you could actually like control how visible things are. Right. right. So wait, how it's, invisible it's, they it's are. operating at a different frequency. What? Yeah, yeah. So like, literally, I think tonal the ghost differences. Could probably, yeah, it could attune itself to a different frequency oh, and probably make itself, <laughs> make itself, make itself, make itself invisible. You know. It, but is it indivisible as well? Uh, with as justice nation, for all yeah as a nation yes as a ghost no I think we are totally just going crazy oh. on this <sighs> it might have yes. been a stress, and, it might have been a stressful week <laughs> yeah yeah and also green just said the name of a Metallica album so I'm good I know uh, were you did you see the all right I'm there that's a complete random tangent blah, 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 blah. sorry go mm-hmm. ahead no, there was there was a massive debate on Twitter today about what was the greatest about Metallica. Metallica? Al- yeah, about which was the greatest <gasps> album on Metallica. I, miss this. I was like, I don't understand what any of you people are talking about. Leave me alone. Where was it? Which corner of Twitter? Uh, I don't know. I I literally saw it and I was like, oh, I'm surprised Justin's not involved. And then I moved on with my life. Oh no. <laughs> oh, okay. Did you guys see Lada's one of Lada's things in there? I think this should be a Valentine's Day challenge for the community. Writing Guardian themed Valentine's Day cards, whether they're ghost themed uh, or not. You know that I have like a massive collection from the past like two years of Destiny themed Valentine cards, right? Right. Like those are the digital ones. I want yeah. like, like people's new lines. Oh, I see. Like, hey, girl, are you from Venus? Because well, you make my spirit bloom. I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Just confused. <laughs> Just confused. <laughs> Everybody in chat's confused too. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey. 
if what y'all want to do is lob Casey Jones softballs, I mean, he's going to crank him out of the park. <laughs> That oh should God. be a thing, though. In a couple of weeks, that should totally be what we ask the community to do: is send us oh my God. <laughs> new Destiny themed pickup line slash Valentine's Day cards. Be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And I Justin has started the downward spiral of the live chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Um, let's see. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's I think that's everything I had, really. Um do we have any dispatches? We do not. The main dispatches were basically uh the responses to the the votes or the, the question. Over right. on, um, I like it. Over on Twitter and uh, Discord. So, should we talk about next week's question again, just as a <laughs> yes. reminder for everybody? Who would win, Saint Fourteen or Osiris in a in a fight? Mm-hmm. And if you want to provide justification of of your answer, please, please do, because I want I want to hear it. <laughs> I would love Even to hear this. Even if it's this. ridiculous. I don't, I, yeah, I don't, I mean, like, sure. Even if it's ridiculous, actually, yeah, that's actually even more better. Is <laughs> just j- give us a reason. <laughs> Show your work. Show your work, community. Show your work. Show your work, please. You, yes. Yeah. And I will keep a tally of who has the most votes. Ooh. Mm. We will keep this and actually make it a thing. <laughs> Death battle. <laughs> it's like our own version of Deadliest Warrior. <clears throat> what was it? Celebrity Deathmatch? Well, there's that, but I was thinking like the I History just, Channel Deadliest Warrior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was going with a more appropriate, <laughs> inner, like, hilarious Wait, is battle. That, is, that, it's like, is that actually appropriate? Because I seem to remember No, no, it's that. completely not appropriate, but it's hilarious. And if you don't oh, know yes. what Celebrity Deathmatch is, you, you need to go find... You're was not that, a was that ro- Was that Robot Chicken that did that? No, it was... Mm-hmm. Well... Same it was MT- MTV. Right. MTV. It was though, MTV, right? but it was the same company that Robot Chicken got to do there. Oh, okay. Like they, That's, I was about to say that the animation same, style was like... Same exactly. style. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, last the last one she put. I'm sorry, but <laughs> okay. I want to use that next week. <laughs> oh man! All right. So, final comments, shout outs. <laughs> Green, what do you got for us? Uh, my shout out actually goes kind of to the mid roll that we never did because we kind of just merged into the biggest debate I've ever had on ghost. Sorry. Um, no, not, no, I not sorry. No, don't be, don't be sorry about it. Um, mine I'm is sorry more kind of, that I'm not sorry for it. Yeah. Yeah. Why? That's what I was going to say. Why? But, uh, my shout out is actually to audible this week because work has been kind of a living nightmare. Cause there's two of us to do a four person job right now. Really? I thought there was only you. Well, I'm the only processor, (laughs) technically. I might have have been having conversations with Green about this. Right. That was last week, though. I was the only processor doing all the payrolls. But this is distributions. Different different beast altogether. So you're like a sub-mind. I'm like somebody's finger monkey, essentially. Anyway, I'm moving on. I'm going to move on. I'm moving on. Justin. It's fine. It's fine. I said it. I know. <laughs> I'm going to get comments later. It's fine. But Audible, I was I I can't listen to books, especially the Dark Tower series when I'm working because it freaks me out and I can't focus. What well, race completely for, completely friendly. Mm, <laughs> I have not I have it downloaded. I've had it downloaded on my phone for 3 months to start the next one. I've not started it. Because I could, I was so Ray, upset at the last book. Yeah, Ray, Ray is not in it. Don't worry, you're you're safe. You're safe. <laughs> I don't know if I trust you anymore. <laughs> she's not. But, she's not in it. It's 
<laughs> but uh, I've found that I actually really like listening to lectures. I'm that kid that in- actually enjoyed going to school. So they have a series called The Great Courses, and it is professors from like really high esteemed professors from around the the world essentially because i've heard mm-hmm. somebody from japan too and they're giving lectures on various topics and the ones i've been listening to lately if you have not been in chat and seen my little tirades on uh, space time and all the sciencey stuff i've been listening to a lot of physics what's great about it is it has no math so it's all the thought physics and Einstein's theory of relativity, special relativity especially. Really, really, really good. And they have some that are free to be able to listen to the first lecture. And each lecture is like 45 minutes long. But you, the, when you get a course, it's like 30, course, or 30 lectures. Mm-hmm. And you can listen to them back to back to back. And they're so good. And sometimes you can get the, the notes to go along with it. So that's my shout out for audible keeping my mind off of all the other bs going on yeah i know uh the producer of lore which is like one of the only other podcasts that i actually listen to um uh aaron Mankey. he he gives them a large amount of kudos as well for the great courses because they're 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 a really good source of um like random trivia too. Like you can, you can flip between them and you don't have to, and they're just informative. They're extremely informative, which is really nice. And they have anything from mythology, philosophy, Mm -hmm. physics to nutrition and health and so many different subjects. It's great. So, um, Justin, what do you got? Uh, yeah, I'd like to send a, giant shout out to the the group that finally got me through the eater of worlds raid lair yay uh, yeah so that's mountain fraggle operation man bag armor plating sir fluffy and uh i don't know which name he wants me to use so i'll just say papa Guides on twitter and it's nagix on xbox live thank you nice. very much Thank you very much, everybody, for showing me all the things and also and or where to stand. And <laughs> also, and possibly more importantly, where not to stand. So thank, you. <laughs> thank you very much. That was very fun. And also, I just wanted to I just wanted to mention um, I, I kind of want to do more of these. So where I'll put it out on Twitter early in the week and then set up a time to where I can do a raid or, or something that, that I haven't been able, cause I still haven't even cleared the Leviathan. So don't worry, I, neither I'd, have I. Yeah. I'd, I mean, I'd, I'd really like to set things up to where, you know, whoever wants to can, can hop in and play. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So that's important that's question. Important question from chat. How many times did you die? Um, in the Eater of Worlds, yeah. I held my own. Like I'm not awful. <laughs> that, that's really dodging the question. <laughs> like, like, thank you, Green. Are, are, are you <laughs> just saying you're dodging the question? Are Are you expecting me to know how many times I died? <laughs> Did it involve ballpark, just ballpark fingers or fingers and toes? Ballpark. Um. I'd probably say the number of times that I died, not including team wipes, would probably be... Yeah, not including team wipes. Yeah, not including team wipes. Probably half a dozen, maybe. Not that bad. Yeah, not that's that not bad. bad. No, that's bad. Not that bad. All right. So, um, Shout outs for me. Just a reminder that we will be doing a Saint 14, the Saint 14 episode next week. Uh, so please be sure to weigh in on the community feedback, which we kind of have touched on a couple times. Um, And then just, yeah, just, I know great Wait, green. Did you have something? I do. I do have one last little thing. Um, We've been having a lot more people mainly uh, contribute to the website. And so if you haven't headed over to the focus fire chat website and seen some of the new writings up there, 
I highly encourage it. We have actually some really, really good fan fiction there. I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago, but I just mm-hmm. wanted to reiterate it because it's some good stuff. And if you like writing, whether you're writing fan fiction or you're writing theories out of your own, I know we have a few guys in chat who just write wall like a wall of text for their theories. If you want to write those out for a theory and you're you don't want to necessarily put it up on Reddit, you could send it over to us and we'll go through a proofread of it and we'll look at putting it up on the website. All right. Well, uh, you guys, yeah, we'll, we'll probably run through the outro real quick and then of course be around for a little bit of an after show with that. We'll begin to wrap the chat up. Thank you again to those over on Twitch for coming to spend your evening with us. If you'd like to join us for the live streaming of the episodes, please be sure to give us a follow over on twitch.tv slash focus fire chat. Links to all our other sites can also be found with our episode archives over on the new focusfirechat.com. Please be sure to email us at focusfirechat at gmail.com with any questions or comments for our team concerning the podcast, and let us know how we're doing by giving us some feedback and a rating over on iTunes as well. Also, be sure to check out all of our amazing podcast partners within the Guardian Radio Network over on theguardiansofdestiny.com. So until next time... Focus your fire and may your light shine bright.